In this video I'll be going over how to diagnose a faulty PCM based on a code being set that is triggering the check engine light. I'll do my best to keep it short. I know the last electrical video I made was pretty long, about 11 minutes, and I can completely understand viewer abandonment in that video. I do the same thing when the videos get too long. So I'm going to try to keep it short and simple, but at the same time I'd like for the viewers to be able to really understand this and know what's going on maybe help you diagnose your own PCM someday but a little overview on this car this is a 1998 Mercury Sable has a 3 liter 24 valve V6 engine and is setting a P0443 trouble code in the powertrain control module now of course the first thing to do whenever diagnosing a check engine light or a service engine soon light in this case is to read the trouble codes down here I have an app downloaded onto my iPad that has a cable connected to the vehicle's DLC that allows me to leave live engine data and trouble codes. So I've retrieved the code and the reason it's set in the pending section is because I've already been doing some work on this so I picked up where I left off. But this is a code that is setting P0443 evaporative emission system purge control valve circuit. What's it, what this means is a powertrain control module is detecting a problem with the purge control valve circuit doesn't necessarily mean that there is a problem with the purge valve a lot of people think okay immediately and I'm guilty of this too thought oh I'll put a purge valve in it that'll probably fix the problem not the case it's a little more complicated than that especially in this case here well, let's go see what the real problem is as you can see I've already got this car taken apart quite a bit but I wanted to at least show you what I've done diagnostics wise on it so you get an idea of what to do and what to look for. Now I have schematics that I've printed out here just so I can make notes and highlight them as you can see there so I know what to look for. So I've printed these out and I've also kept track of my progress with the yellow highlighter on the diagnostic procedure and the wiring schematics so I know what circuits I'm going after. But I also like to pull it up on my iPad here as you can pinch and zoom and it's easier to read things and easier to see the schematics. So what we're starting with here is a P0443 trouble code. Here is a list of possible causes that it could be. Now the first step is to check the ignition voltage at the purge valve harness connector and battery negative post. That's where you're going to put your DVOM. You're going to put it between the battery positive voltage circuit on the purge valve and then the other negative terminal of your DVOM to the battery negative post which is right there and you want to check for battery voltage because as you can see the way that this the way that this circuit works let me go down to my wiring schematic here this is what we're this is what we're looking at right here here's the evaporative emissions canister purge valve as you can see we have a red wire and a gray wire with a yellow tracer going to it. Now the red wire is battery voltage. As you can see, this comes from your ignition on signal. So whenever you turn the key on, this becomes hot with battery voltage. I've tested that and that is good. As you can see up here, I've made a note, battery positive voltage, okay. So I'm getting battery positive voltage right here. Next step was to test the evaporative purge valve solenoid. This is a little solenoid in here. And I tested that. I have 35 ohms of resistance. That's perfectly within spec. The next step was to check the resistance on the gray wire with yellow tracer. This is a wire that goes from the purge valve to the PCM. As you can see right here, this is your powertrain control module where all these circuits are going to. If you look really close, you'll see a little number 56. That is the terminal on the PCM that I'm looking for. So now the suspected problem is we either have a broken wire on the piece, on this gray wire with yellow tracer going to the PCM, a bad PCM, or short to voltage. Now what I found was really interesting though, again I'm not going to go through setting all this up because it takes a lot of time, but what I found was really interesting was when I checked for voltage on the other side of the EVAP canister purge valve going from the purge valve connector to the PCM connector, I had 10 volts. Going from the EVAP canister purge valve connector to the battery negative post, I had 12 volts. So that really threw up a red flag when I was looking at this. The way the system works is whenever you turn the key on, this canister purge valve always has power. 
However, it won't open the solenoid valve until the current starts flowing. The powertrain control module acts as a ground switch. Whenever it commands the purge valve on, it closes the ground switch, allowing current to flow through the battery, or from the battery, through the purge valve, and to the PCM, which then goes back to ground. The PCM is basically a switch on the ground side, because current won't flow until it closes the switch, and this canister purge valve won't open until the current is flowing. I hope all that makes sense. It's quite a mouthful, and I'm trying to wrap all this up into a shorter video without going on and on forever. But now you should have a basic idea of how the circuit works. Now there's one other thing that I forgot to mention earlier in the video, and that is this vehicle also had two more trouble codes set. It had a rich code set for bank one and a rich code set for bank two. That's why initially I thought that the purge valve may be sticking open. The purge valve is what opens and allows gas fumes from the vehicle's fuel tank to be burned in the engine. If that is sticking open all the time, you'll get a rich condition because the engine is getting too much fuel. But I realized that that couldn't be the case if the purge valve is working properly. The purge valve has got to be functioning, so why is it always open? And why are we getting these rich codes? So I continued to do some more diagnosing and I'm constantly thinking, why is the voltage when grounded through the PCM 10 volts, but if I ground it through the negative battery post, it's 12 volts? That's when the thought, could the PCM possibly be bad, started coming to mind. So let's do a little bit more of the reading here on what we have to do. After I checked the battery voltage and verified it was good on the negative post, I went to the next step. Measure voltage between the power circuit and the EVAP canister purge valve harness and connector at the negative battery post. I had the good, correct voltage, so I go on to the next step here. Measure the canister purge valve resistance. It was at 35 ohms, so that's good. Then we go on to the next step here. Now we have to measure the resistance of the EVAP canister purge valve circuit between the PCM test pin 56 and EVAP canister purge valve harness connector. This resistance was 0.5 ohms, so we know that that's in spec as well. And that's when I come over here and look at this diagram of the PCM connector. As you can see, I'm looking for number 56, which is the the gray wire with yellow tracer, we go down here, that's number 56, that's the EVAP caster purge valve. And if you go up here, da 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 da, where's it at, where's it at, here it is right here. It's number 101, the gray with yellow tracer. So I measured, I disconnected the PCM here, and I measured the resistance on that circuit to this connector right here. You can see the gray wire with yellow tracer and that was 0.5 ohms. So we know that, that, the, that the circuit is good and doesn't have excessive resistance. Now I left my highlighter at work, but I've done all the rest of these steps, and what I have gotten to is this step right here, where you check the EVAP canister purge valve circuit for short to power in the harness, which is not the case. That was easy because I checked for voltage with the key in the off position, and there was no power. So as you can see, the voltage was not greater than 10.5 volts. If it's no, replace the damaged PCM. Now I know this is a lot to take in in a few minutes, but if you think about it, it really makes sense. Why would the engine control module be setting a purge valve circuit code and two rich codes, as if the engine was getting too much fuel from the gas tank fumes through the purge valve? It makes sense that the PCM has failed internally, is shorted to ground, not providing a 100% clean connection to ground, which is why it requires two volts to push through the PCM, but it explains why I'm only reading 10 volts at the connector when grounded through the PCM versus grounded through the battery. So now the next step is to replace the PCM. Fortunately, these are plug and play. There is no programming to do, and this should resolve our problem. Before I remove the old PCM though, I wanted to show you where the biggest red flag came from when I was diagnosing this. Currently I have the ignition on and the DVOM is connected to the purge valve connector. The yellow one is battery positive voltage, the black one is PCM ground. As you can see, we're only reading 10.32 volts. So if current battery voltage is 11.6, which is where it's at now, why is it reading low when grounding through the PCM? So let's ground this to the negative battery terminal and see if the voltage changes. As you can see, the battery voltage is now almost at 11.6 volts with the circuit grounded through the negative battery post. 
on the vehicle. That explains the problem that there is somewhere inside the PCM a short to ground but it's not completely clean. It's still got some excessive resistance on it. It's not a clean short. And that explains our problem right there. So next step, we'll replace the PCM and see if that solves our problem.